As it was prophesied to happen, there is an end times remnant waking up out of its deep sleep, forsaking the traditions and apostasy of many generations. A body of believers in Messiah Yahusha who have woken up and are coming back to finally hear and obey the voice of Yahuwah. The book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, included in the 1611 KJV, the Septuagint, and many other versions, is like the book of Proverbs, but even more in depth, and is exactly the kind of book those who are pursuing the path of righteousness can glean from. Join myself and Justin from Christian Truthers as we study this great book line by line and glean as Bereans do. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the Parable of the Vineyard and Christian Truthers, Book of Ecclesiasticus, Berean Study. My name is Adam, and joined here with Brother Justin from Christian Truthers. Welcome, brother. Thank you for having me, Adam. Shalom to everybody. Very excited to be here. Same here. All right, let's uh, let's get right into it. We're going to be picking back up with Chapter 3 from the Book of Sirach, a.k.a. Ecclesiasticus. And uh, if you don't mind, if you would uh, bless us with a little bit of prayer, and let's get right into it. Sounds good. Most High Yahuwah, Father, be with us, Father, as we read through this word, Father. We pray that you would uh, give us the the uh, the technical support, the spiritual support, uh, the the knowledge and the wisdom we need to to dissect this word, Father. We pray that your Spirit would be with us, it, that it would be on Adam's tongue and on mine, Father, as we go through this in Yahusha's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, and. Uh... We <laughs> Justin prayed for some technical support because uh, we've had some issues just trying to get this recording started. But uh, those of us uh, at the uh, that frequent the Parable of the Vineyard uh, live streams on Shabbat are very very familiar with technical difficulties. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we still get them. We still get them all the time. So, anyways, it's, it's God's way of teaching all of us more patience, right? That's right. That's right. So we're going to be reading through chapter three today, and uh, brother Justin, if you would uh, go ahead and get us started. And I'll read the first Sounds 16 good. verses, and then I'll uh, then I'll jump in. All right, cool, man. All right, this is chapter 3, the book of Ecclesiasticus, otherwise known as the book of Sirach, verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. For Yahuwah has given the father honor over the children and has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honors his father makes an atonement for his sins, and he that honors mother is as one who lays up treasure. Now this, I of course have to stop for this part because it's probably very, uh, probably shocking for people who may not be familiar with the the Old Testament. Um, this, uh, this concept that uh, atonement for sins can be made through our actions. Um, and verse three there clearly says, whoso honors his father makes an atonement for sins. So I wanted to actually bring up um, and mention real quick Psalm 51, uh, verses 16 through 19, because uh, in the past we've we've seen I think the the primary uh, popular theology of the Christian world is that sin is only atoned for by blood, um, whether that be the blood of Messiah or the blood of bulls and goats in the uh, in the Old Testament, uh, but we actually see a different perspective in Psalm 51, 16 through 19. It says. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of Yahuwah are a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. O Yahuwah, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really cool because it's saying that right, or we're in this place here. In verse 19, it says at the end, 
that there will be a time, uh, 18 and 19, when we're in Zion, when we're in Jerusalem, and the walls of Zion are built, then uh, Yah will be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and all that. But in this time now where we're not in Zion yet, uh, the real th the thing he really wants is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He really wants us to bend to his will and to follow his instructions. And so this is just one example in Psalm 51 of many examples throughout the Tanakh where we see the concept of righteousness being attained through our actions. So I wanted to point that out. Right. Good point. Um, and, you know, the book of Hosea said specifically that the children of Israel would be many days without a sacrifice, without a temple, without a priesthood, um, you know, all those things. But as, as this points out and uh, Ezekiel 40 through the end of it uh, clearly points out that uh, there will be sacrifices reinstated with the uh, millennial reign. So. Uh, excellent Amen. call, and and this is definitely, I think, a great. This I'm, I'm glad you pointed this uh, out. I think this is a great definition of when Peter says that we are um, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, offering up spiritual sacrifices. I think this is a. This actually answers a question for me uh, of how to define what that looks like. Um, uh, it, it, what a what a spiritual sacrifice looks like. So, good call. And again, another example too, where the disciples, just like the Messiah, were. We're, we're not just making up wisdom. You know, the Holy Spirit didn't just give them this brand new insight that didn't exist prior to them. But like like First Peter says, this came straight from Psalm 51. So for, again, uh, whether it was just the spirit within him or whether it was, uh, you know, Peter's own study, this, this is a precept that wasn't new. Mm -hmm. So right. he was familiar with that. Right, and we know Yahweh doesn't change. So, uh, exactly. Even though, like you said, even though, and we're going to read this a little bit later on at at the end of this chapter, it also is going to tell us that charity, um, you know, is also covers sins as well. Um, exactly. So we know nothing changes. So although we've been reconciled to Yahuwah by the blood of Messiah Yahusha alone, we still have a walk, and we still have actions, we still mess up and whatnot, and. Um, these are these are great things to do, um, mm -hmm. which is to honor our parents, uh, and as we'll see a little bit later, uh, charity as well. Um, Amen. It's, it's still talked about all throughout the scriptures. Uh, James talks about it. Um, uh, Peter talks about it, uh, and I think also Paul talks about it as well about you know, having having fervent charity uh, amongst mm -hmm. each other. And so that's obviously something that Yahuwah would never. Um, just stop saying, well, I don't like that anymore. So I don't, I don't, I don't really care about charity anymore. I don't really care about honoring your, your parents anymore. Right, right, yeah. All you got to do is believe in Jesus, and you don't got to care about anybody else, right? <laughs> just walk, walk how you want to walk, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and actually, verse 5 is another, another interesting precept, which says, Whoso honors his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he makes his prayer, he shall be heard. Now, I'm not going to belabor this point too much. We've talked about this many times on this channel. Um, but just to real quick, Proverbs 28.9 says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. And then John, yes, the New Testament, the book of John, verse, or chapter 9, verse 31 says, Now we know that Yahuwah heareth not sinners. Right. But if any man be a worshiper of Yah and doeth his will, him he heareth. So again, not a foreign precept here that his uh, in verse five of Ecclesiasticus here that the prayer your prayer will be heard when you honor your father. It's yeah, it's true. And you know, I have to say, I think I I think I alluded to this a little bit last uh, um, last uh, study on chapter two. I kind of was you know foreshadowing what or, or talking a little bit about what was going to come here. But I've actually seen this first part of verse five. I've actually seen this in my own life. Um, you know, it's something that I, uh, reading this book, I've had to dig down on my own, uh, my own heart because, because my father, um, because he turned away from Yah and because he had kind of said some you know, wicked things to me, uh, about my faith, you know, calling me back then, calling me a Jesus freak, you know, but, um, you know, I kind of just forsook him in my mind. I kind of just, you know, let him go. And I was just like, all right, fine. Um, but reading this chapter specifically and you know some of the verses in proverbs really made me dig down in my heart and ask myself you know do i are we to honor our parents only if they're really good people if they're righteous if they're believers you know i don't think that's the case and 
I've started to try to find ways to honor my my earthly father in any way I can, trying to show him the fruits of the Spirit, regardless of how he treats me or regardless of some of the things that I disagree with his lifestyle and whatnot. And I have actually seen this verse come alive in my life that I've actually, not that I didn't have joy in my children, I've always had joy in my children, but it's like I've seen Yahuwah give me even more peace and more joy with my children, them hearkening to me or listening to me, obeying me. Uh, I've seen them have a have more of a heart for Yahuwah. The more that I've tried to honor my earthly father uh, in, in any way that I can, small or large. Uh, so I, I just wanted to share that because I've actually seen this come alive in my life, and it's a blessing. And it's something that I would recommend each, of, each and every one of you because we are living in the last days where a lot of us, our parents, are not walking in the way. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I just don't see any scripture that says, uh, that says for us to forsake our parents if they're not walking in the way, um, or if they're rude to us, or if they do bad things to us, or whatever, whatever happens. And I know that's very rampant in these days. Um, You know, for a lot of us, we've finally found the father that we've always wanted with Yahuwah, but uh, Mm -hmm. we still have uh, parents that uh, we, there's things that they've done for us that we can never repay, you know, maybe just, even just changing our diapers and, but, you know, even going further, uh, going back to, you know, it was through them that, you know, we were able to come into this world. Of course it was Yahuwah, but, you know, we are their seed. And so it's like, there's things that we can never repay them uh, for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah, we're going to see more of that in this chapter, actually. Uh, when we get to like 23 ish in that area, it gives us a little bit more about, about how that works where, uh, cause many people don't understand what it means to honor your father and mother and what, how does that apply? What does that really mean? You know, especially when they don't have the same doctrines that you do, right. or they don't apply the scriptures to their lives the way that you might. Um, so it's like, well, how do you honor your father and mother then? And, uh, it's going to tell us more about that in a few verses here. Right. But yeah, amen, bro. Amen. I, I've, I've experienced the same thing, man. Um, when I became more softened and patient and meek towards my own parents, who to this day uh, consider my ministry regrettable. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, no, mine too. Well, somehow, mysteriously, there has been an increase in joy in our, ho- in our home uh, when we do promote peace with, our, with my parents. And uh, again, we'll get into that more in a second. It's, I'm not going to give away too much. But okay. pretty cool. All right. Um, verse six says, he that honors his father shall have a long life. And he that is obedient unto Yahuwah shall be a comfort to his mother. He that fears Yahuwah will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Honor your father and mother both in word and deed that a blessing may come upon you from them. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother roots out foundations. I think that's an interesting verse. I don't have any yes. notes for this, but it just reminds me of the way each of the patriarchs blessed their children after them. And we saw that it dramat- had a dramatic impact on their children's destiny almost, you know? Um, and so even it, here it's, it's saying that that blessing from our father's uh, will have an impact on us, even if there's sort of a, you know, like, I guess I'm, I guess I'm, I guess I'm wondering what kind of a blessing or curse can come from a parent who is not in the same walk we are. I think there is still something there. Uh, yeah, I think I that agree. our words our spoken word still has an effect on us. So. I, I agree. And, you know, it reminds me of, you know, in, in kind of going back to, or like kind of what you said, as far as, uh, whether this works, whether they're believers or not believers, and I agree with you. It reminds me of the passage. Uh, I think it's actually let me just pull it up instead of trying to loosely quote it. I think it's at the end of Matthew five, um, talking about uh, our. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. But I and obviously our parent, even our uh, even wicked parents. I don't think are our enemies. But here, here we go. Um, you have heard that it had been said, "Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy." And you notice he doesn't say that it was written because there's nothing written that says hate your enemy. But mm-hmm. I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despite despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. 
for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Now here's the key. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So I think we can apply this same logic here to even even wicked parents. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I think we could, uh, you know, love them, bless them, uh, do good to them, even if, honestly, I mean, I know there's some extreme, we, we were actually talking about this, Justin, on the tour portions from a few weeks ago when we were in Exodus 20 with the giving of the commandments, and we were talking a little bit about what we're talking about today as far as honoring your parents regardless, and I, I got a lot of comments, you know, my parent, <laughs> my parents did this, they did that, you know, they were abusive, and this, and I, you know, I know there's some extreme cases out there, but I think regardless, um, I think we need to find any way we can to honor our parents. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been one of the Ten Commandments. It's obviously mm-hmm. so important to Yahuwah that we mm-hmm. honor our parents. So um, just you know, something to consider out there for anybody that has some extreme cases of what their parents may or may not have done to them. So, Amen. Amen. And again, what, practically, what does it mean to honor them? We'll, we'll get into that really shortly here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. But also, lastly, at the uh, last part of this, uh, I don't have any notes for this either, but it just dawned on me, uh, this last part here, but the curse of the mother roots out foundations. Uh, think about when they were crucifying Messiah, and they said, uh, his blood be on us and on our children, right? So they're bringing a curse uh, on themselves, and it certainly mm-hmm. did root out their foundation um, mm-hmm. and their and their, na- and their, you know, their nation, but just uh, something interesting there. Amen to that. By right, verse 10. It says, glory not in the dishonor of your father, for your father's dishonor is of no glory unto you. So, I mean, this is something actually I think hits home as well. I'm not going to drive this home, but just to meditate on that. So when your father, even one that has been rebellious against what you think is the truth, when you see them get humbled or dishonored, you know, it can be tempting to be like, hey, you brought it upon yourself. You should have listened. You should have whatever. But it's saying not to glory in that because that's that's not glory for you, you know. Right, right. Verse eleven says, "For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father, and a mother is in dishonor is a reproach to the children." My son, help your father in his age and grieve him not as long as he lives. Now this is where we start getting into what does it really mean to honor your parents. I agree. There's a lot of spiritual application to this, but there's also a very physical, tangible application. And from from our study in the past, Adam and I have talked about it before. Uh, honoring them really simply means to take care of them. The way Adam was just describing how they took care of you and we really can't pay that back and they raised us and paid for everything. Uh, Well, we're going to start seeing uh, even just here in this little section of scripture um, how honoring them means kind of paying back. They're going to go into a state, you know, where they sort of diminish in, in health, in, uh, in understanding, in, in a lot of ways. And so we have to be there to help them in their old age, as verse 12 says, and grieve them not as long as they live. And verse 13 is huge. It says, and if his understanding fail, have patience with him and despise him not when you are in your full strength. So you see this Your father rises up, gets to his max ability emotionally, physically, spiritually. Well, maybe not spiritually, but but then they start to get older and come down as the sun comes up and and we grow up and we become we come into our full strength. um, It's it's warning us like not to think yourself higher or better or stronger. Um, And so I actually wanted to point out that in this verse, it says, it seems to primarily point to the way in which people become slower to understand and comprehend things in their older age. However, our parents today live much shorter lives than those of the old. And so our parents are more prone to lose biblical understanding because of a lifetime of bad teachings as well. So um, for them, at least many of them, hopefully were raised in a, a Hebrew mindset they were raised around Torah, the Tanakh. And yet even in their old age, it, it became very possible for them to, sort of wane in their understanding to become hard of hearing, to be slower to comprehend what's going on. And we see that uh, with dementia, which is rampant in our country today. Now it doesn't take so long. Now your parents can be in their 50s and 60s and start struggling with this stuff. Um, So, and and on top of that, our parents have come from, again, hundreds of years of of bad doctrine, bad teaching, uh, teachings designed to 
eradicate and null nullify what's in the word. Right. So, um, because of the, because of the church, honestly. So I think to, for me, uh, one of the applications for this verse is that it's reminding us that whether it's of age or bad understanding, we have to be patient with the elderly, especially with our fathers. Exactly. Well said. And and we did see that in the scriptures with the uh, understanding failing. I mean, how on earth did Yaakov, uh, you know, um, trick uh, Yitzchak, you know, with yeah, exactly, I mean, <laughs> with you know, with putting some goat, some goat hair on his arm and stuff and on his hands. It's like, come on, obviously his understanding failed, uh, you know, at that point. But uh, yeah, well said. And and I and I actually uh, just read it for what it was, but I'm glad that you, I'm glad Yahweh give you wisdom as to apply it also in a uh, in a scriptural understanding uh, point to to have patience with them. And you know, like you know, for you. Uh, your your parents are believers, but you know, bad doctrine for me. Yeah. You know, my father he even fell away from. He used to he grew up a Jew, but he even fell away from Judaism. So now he doesn't even believe. And so it's like we, we need to have patience with them. You know, regardless mm -hmm. of whatever the situation is. And um, yeah, this is thirteen's. A, it's a great. It's a great scripture. And Amen. you know, yeah, and and you know, it, it, this this verse right here. Uh, the actually. Um, um, actually yeah 12 13 and 14 uh is gonna make me think you know when my, my parents get older am i just gonna shove them in a retire retirement home and visit them <laughs> you know once a month or you know once a quarter and i don't think that's how you know yahoo wants to wants it done uh, and i'm not yeah. i'm not and by the way i'm not condemning out there anybody out there if you have your parents in a, in a nursing home or whatnot but uh you know maybe some of these verses might uh might spur some some change in that but i just um you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not to say that for whatever reason, you know, if if that's the best version of care you can provide to right. your parents, um, you know, for whatever reason, then that's that's between you and Yah. Sure, right, right. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I'm with you on that. I understand what where your heart is on this. Like, you know, we had very little understanding when we were pooping on ourselves, right. little children, and they they were patient with us. We well, at least we hope so, right? And literally, the tide the tide can turn, the tables can turn, and we might literally have to be cleaning up poop for them, and they might not understand what's going on either. We might have to be patient with them. So I can, and I can see that being a righteous deed in Yahuwah's eyes. Um, right. Yeah. I, I can see him in that being honorable in his eyes to do something like that to Amen. put aside maybe some of your free time and uh for doing something for yourself and repaying uh, trying to repay your parents to, to which we could never repay them but uh, i think it's in baruch it says that uh, specifically says that we could never i actually tried to search it out for this study but i couldn't find it but i think it's in baruch somewhere it says that uh we can never we can never repay our parents uh for what wow. they've done for us wow uh, i'd love to to find that if somebody knows this out there you're watching this you're like i know what scripture you're talking about please put it in the comment section i was really trying to find this and i'm usually successful finding scriptures i'm looking for but i couldn't find it so it may be not but baruch it might be something else that's probably where i messed up but anyways yeah yeah well i mean and it ties in right there with in verse 14 where it says for the relieving of your father shall not be forgotten and you were just saying that you know you think that y'all sees this as an honorable thing i mean literally uh it, it, again it's one of these reverse thinking things that we have to kind of have our mind renewed by I think a lot of early Christians might think that the most honorable thing that one of us could do is become a great king, ruler, pastor, preacher, evangelist, and lead many to, to truth. And of course, that is a very important role for many people. But the reality is when Messiah showed us what it looks like to, to, uh, to be perfect and be holy, he was washing feet, you know? Right. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you, man. I think holding, a, a, you know, holding a pack of baby wipes could be more more valuable than holding a scepter, depending upon where you're at, what, yeah. where your heart is, you know. Yeah. So. Very true. Uh, okay, so and it says that your 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 relieving of your father will not be forgotten. So we're going to be repaid for this. Instead of sins, it shall be added to build you up. So in the day of your affliction, verse 15, it shall be remembered. Your sins also shall melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. Now, this is, again, another huge example. Uh, it says your sins also shall melt away. The principle is the same as we find everywhere else in the word, where if we have patience with others, we also receive patience from Yah, right? The same measure of 
what is it? Uh, Matthew 7, 2. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you right. again. So again, same, same principle. And, you know, at the end of the day, what we're reading about is keeping of the fifth commandment, is to honor your mother and your father. And I think we can obviously apply this to all the commandments, uh, you know, by not taking Yahuwah's name in vain, by not having other Elohim, by not, you know, uh, making his uh, his name void, uh, the Sabbath, the big one, right? Keep uh, mm -hmm. Remembering his Sabbath and keeping it holy. All these, you know, by keeping all these, it, I, it, I think we can apply the same thing. It will be remembered by keeping of these commandments, because that's at the end of the day, that's that's you know what we're com commanded to do. Amen, amen, bro. Our right, last verse, and we'll switch over here. Okay. It says in verse sixteen, "He that forsakes his father is as a blasphemer, and he that angers his mother is cursed of Elohim." Wow. And this is where you know this book uh, and other studies with Proverbs has really kind of really changed my heart and my mind about my personal situation with my unbelieving father. And I kind of forsook him in my mind. I kind of just you know let him go. I was like, all right, you know, you want to call me those names or whatever, so be it. You know, I was kind of like, fine. You know, but that's that's not the attitude you know that I should have. And uh, I'm just grateful for these kind of wise precepts to uh, you know bring us back to. Uh, what Yahweh has really called us to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting too. That, um, I mean, I, I don't have a, a perfect answer for this, but he that forsakes his father is as a blasphemer. Now, I'm not saying he is a blasphemer, but it's saying he's is as a blasphemer. So it's like a very similar, it's like akin. And I wonder if maybe this is perhaps because, um, you know, in a, in a way, our fathers are our models for Yah. Mm -hmm. And so maybe this is, you know, if, yeah. if we can, if we can understand this in a applicable, tangible way with our own physical fathers, then we can understand it better with our, our heavenly father. So that's actually, like, that's actually a really good point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't mean to cut you off. No. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry too. I, it's almost like he was teaching us something through this small thing, you know, something just dawned on me when you're, when you were talking about this, I actually got goosebumps uh, when you were saying this, because it reminds me because uh, it, the fifth commandment is the first commandment with promise that you will live a long life in the land. Right? So if you are honoring your father, which is the model for Yahuwah, and if we honor Yahweh by keeping His ways, we have life, right? Because what Messiah said, "If if you will, if you will enter into life, keep the commandments." So I definitely see that uh, connection that I, that I've never seen before. So I'm still so goosebumpy. So good call, yeah. That's awesome praise, yeah. It's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Lord Yah. That's awesome. So uh, I just want to read. Uh, just a few passages in just a few verses in Proverbs that kind of just encompasses what we just read in Sirach to kind of just uh, give another witness uh, that Sirach is not standalone on some of these precepts here. So Proverbs 30, 11 through 17, there is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. So it's like, you know, you can see here that it's like uh, a generation that kind of just forsakes their parents, right? Even though they think they're doing the right thing. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The horse, horse, horselach, I don't know what that is. I don't either. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, just because this is supposed to be a Berean study, horselach, uh, uh, a species of leech? Blood sucking. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. A horse lock hath two daughters crying. Give, give. Okay. So that makes sense. Like a leech. Yeah. Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not. It is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out. And the young eagles shall eat it. So, just some more warnings here from uh, from Solomon uh, through the Ruach that uh, you know we are to honor our parents and to not mock, to not scoff, uh, and to have patience. So, and to not be a horselach, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new Don't one. <laughs> All right.
for sure. Okay, verse 17. Uh, my son, go on with your business in meekness, so shall you be beloved of him that is approved. And this just reminds me of, uh, was it uh, Philemon 2.12, which says, you know, to work out our own salvation in fear and troubling. So, you know, we don't need to, and I see this so often, unfortunately, in this generation, Yahuwah is giving a lot of people wisdom that are asking for it and that are seeking for it. Um, but we also are seeing a lot of people uh, taking that two-edged sword and kind of wielding it improperly and kind of going around and, and being high and mighty and, and uh, kind of lording over people with wisdom. And uh, do you know what I'm saying? You know, people just kind of using that wisdom improperly. So it's like, you know, I, I think as we continue to go along, we just needed to always stay meekness, you know, stay in, in meekness. And just for, honestly, I think Moshe is, Moshe is just a great example of meekness. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah gave him immense wisdom, but he never like rose up over the people. You know, when the people rose up against Moshe, what did he do? He like laid on the floor, right? And was praying to Yahuwah, you know, whereas <clears throat> he could have been, you know, he could have, re you know, rebuked them back or uh, just been high and mighty with, with what Yah had given him. So and just, just some things to, to think about. I think um, I want to say there's a verse that says Mos Moshe was the most humble man. It does. Oh, yeah. It says uh, Numbers 12, 3. It says, now the man Moshe was very meek, more than all people who are on the entire face of the earth. Right. So the humblest example. man in the world. Or... What a good example he was, too. Mm -hmm. He wasn't perfect. Remember, he, st he struck that rock uh, twice. But yeah, you know, yeah. But hey, uh, we all, uh, you know, we all have made some mistakes. And he was uh, timid, you know. And, and there's some scriptures that talk about not being timid. So you know, not a perfect guy, but definitely uh, as close as, as to Yahusha as I've seen. So, Amen. All right, verse 18, the greater you are, the more humble yourself. So kind of still going along with, with Moshe. I mean, he was he was great in the eyes of the people. He was their leader on earth. Of course, Yahuwah was the leader, but uh, it was through Moshe. And so another great example, and, and same with, of course, the, our greatest example, which is Messiah, Yahusha. You said it earlier, you know, he's our king of kings. He's the word. He's the Torah made flesh. And what did he do? He came to serve. And so he humbled himself uh, in the sight of his uh, disciples and uh, everyone that he taught. Now, certainly he had some other scenes where he was flipping tables and rebuking, but at the end of the day, he, he was uh, our example of meekness and, and humbleness. Amen. So let's re let's you know, let's think of this in a in a sense that knowing that we're all equal regardless of you know where we're at in our walk and, and these kind of things. But let's think of this maybe even in a in a sense of him giving us wisdom. And the, the more wisdom he gives us, right, the greater we may be in his eyes. The greater we are, the more we should humble ourselves, especially uh, when we're having discussions with brothers and sisters that we may not agree on. I think we should. Uh, you know, take that example from Moshe yeah. and just lay down on the ground and just humble ourselves and saying that, and you shall find favor before Yahuwah. Uh, many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. And so uh, it's like that, uh, like that parable that Messiah Yahusha taught that, uh, you know, uh, was he say like to whom much is given even more will be given unto him or, or something like that if, if we use it wisely more will be given unto us so it's like again thinking of this wisdom that Yahweh is continuing to give us um, I think as, lo as long as we continue to stay humble and meek and not high and mighty um, especially you know with you know with discussions like this with our parents that may disagree uh, I think we should always remember to be meek and um, you know He'll continue to reveal more and more to us, which is so important in these last days because, uh, you know, he is pouring out this wisdom. So let us uh, mm -hmm. let us be meek to receive it, to receive more. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I think um, for for those who, and you know, I, I probably, this is probably an uncommon um, uh, issue with most people listening because most people are not um, in a position of uh, of teaching. But uh, yeah, there, you, you can really see when uh, a man or a woman is commended um, or honored or lifted up um, or given more subscribers or whatever it is they're given because of uh, their instruction, because of what y'all is doing in their life, whatever, you can really see like the, the two major reactions that are prevalent. And one is, is one of the flesh where you start to feel special. Mm -hmm. Um, thinking that, you know, well, y'all is doing this through you because you're so, 
you're so good you're so whatever and although that the, although that that is technically true uh, yah uses obedient people to do great things look at every man in the in the word uh especially the prophets um they didn't think themselves that way right. you know right. When, when I'm when, oh, sorry, when Yahuwah approached Jeremiah, he was like, you got the wrong guy. When he approached Moshe, he's like, you got the wrong guy, you know? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> uh, if you start to think, well, maybe I am the right guy, you know, like uh, you're, you're unfortunately missing out on, uh, you're forgetting the fear aspect because um, everything we speak uh, to other people and, and influences them in, in such a way that that we're responsible for as well so that's that's why this wisdom is here that uh the greater you become the more humble yourself because the more you have to realize that uh now you're making decisions that are going to influence more people and that's going to be greater greater sin on your own head true um so Very yeah true. and you know saul saul king saul was a great example of that yahweh lifted him up above all the people and mm -hmm. and he did good for a while and then he started transgressing and he started getting jealous and you know all these kind of things and he thought he was above the law and remember when when samuel rebuked him because saul mm -hmm. took the role of the priest by doing the sacrifice himself and uh not and then of course also not listening to yahoo where he says go in and kill everything don't don't take anything but you know he's like well i'm not gonna listen and he's like and, and also he was appeasing the people but by taking the cattle and whatnot and he, and he justified it by sacrificing you know all this kind of stuff and you mm -hmm. know samuel is like uh obedience is better than sacrifice and we saw what happened to king saul he's a perfect example of uh someone that gets lifted up and lets it get to their head and they are brought down low very low so exactly exactly okay verse 20 for the power of yahuwah is great don't we know that and he is honored of the lowly seek not out things that are too hard for you neither search the things that are above your strength but what is commanded you think thereupon with reverence for it is not needful for you to see with your eyes the things that are in secret this is really interesting and i, and I love that these two verses kind of go together and i have to i'd love to venture to think that um you know what it says here it says first it says seek that don't seek things that are too hard for you and then it goes into but what is commanded of you and that reminds me really of uh pull it up here deuteronomy 30 19 through 14 which basically says it's not too hard for you to do his commandments right. uh, <laughs> which said deuteronomy 39 19 through 14 says and yahuwah thy elohim will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy land for good for yahuwah will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoices over thy fathers if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh the Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in the book of the law and if thou if thou turn unto Yahweh the Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul for this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee neither is it far off it is not in heaven that thou should say who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it and he's like uh uh but the word is very nigh unto you in the, in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it so definitely saying it's not too hard and we've talked about this a lot justin over over the, the years that uh you know there have been many examples of people being able to keep the the commandments and even some instances of them keeping it perfectly like we saw in uh, the beginning of luke where um um who was it? Was it uh, the the parent Zechariah and and, Elizabeth, and and his wife? They, right. they, they said they kept it perfectly, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's other examples as well. But uh, you know, it's just interesting here that you know we're we're not commanded to seek things out that are too hard, and that shouldn't come as a surprise either because Yahusha taught the parable of the talents, um, and he says you know gave one five talents, one two, and one the other, uh, and he said according to their several ability. So that tells us that people have different abilities, and some have more abilities than others. That's just how Yahuwah created us, and you know one could say that oh that's not fair or whatever. Listen, you know, uh, uh, does the does the clay say to the potter, "Why have you made me this way?" No, no, we it, we don't. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, knowing that we all have different, and that's you know that, and that's just how it is. And you know, he made some beautiful, and he made some not. He made some tall, and he made some short. You know, that's just how it is. Uh, mm-hmm. And we and we have to learn to uh, embrace what we are and what and w- whatever Yahuwah has molded us and created us to be. But we have to realize that there are some things that are too hard for you. You know, modern day, um, a modern day, uh, um, um, you know. Hollywood theology, I don't know what to call it, modern day man, man made teachings will say that, you know, we can all do anything we want. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's, I think that's very Disney ish, very dreamy, very, you know, you can do it. It's not true. I mean, we have limitations, uh, according to the word and I'm, I'm much apt, more apt to believe the scriptures saying that there are some things that may be too hard for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, math is really hard for me. I'm just not really good with math, you know? And so I know that. Uh, and so I don't seek, seek out, seek out things that are, are rooted in math. You know what I mean? Uh, (laughs) witchcraft anyways is it oh yeah that's probably you're right you're probably right <laughs> it's, um, that's uh that's gonna get taken out of context for sure no but i think i think there's forms of advanced math that were developed by occultists that don't make any sense and it really is like um almost like a spell in my opinion i thought that Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I say like, I, I agree with you. I I kind of thought that sometimes. And I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. Like, you you figure out the problem. It takes you 14 minutes to figure out this one problem, and then mm-hmm. you get to it, and you're like, this doesn't the the answer doesn't even make sense. Like, why does this even matter? Like, how does this work? Right. Yeah. It's like it's like looking at um. If you open up your computer, look at the the uh, motherboard, and look at the, all the different the processor and all the different components on there. Someone can be like someone can tell you. Uh, oh, well, this does this and this does that and this transfers information to that. And it's like, it's still like, yeah, but but how though? Like, how does it do that in there? Like, how does it transfer? It doesn't, it's like stuff that some stuff that just doesn't make any sense. I think that there's um, sort of two applications for this in that like, um, for example, if, we're, if we seek things out, if we don't seek things out that are too hard for us, then we become very anti-ambitious in a worldly mm-hmm. sense. So mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a medical surgeon. I'm not any of those things. And, you know, like in a sense, it's like there, there are certain things that there's really no point in me seeking out when y'all's instructions are simple and he wants us to lead a simple and quiet life. You know, it's not to say that we don't need certain types of professionals who, who, who are good at those things, but it's like, why try and make yourself into something that you're not right. Um, and then on top of that, I think there's another aspect to to that where when we seek try and seek out things that we don't understand, um, the next verse actually says in verse 23, be not curious in unnecessary matters for more things are showed unto you than men understand. Mm-hmm. And I think there's sort of like a, for me at least, I, I, I believe there's sort of an occult um, magic witchcrafty type of uh, connotations here because like the secret rule, workings of like rulers and powers behind the scenes or not something that we need to, we know they exist, we know they happen, but we don't really need to know exactly how to do what they're doing. Like we don't need to know the exact spells and the exact, you know, right. um, it, there, there's some things that we really just don't want to know. It's kind of like Adam and Eve, you know, the knowledge of good and evil. They were better off in their innocence than they were knowing what sin is, you know? Um, so anyway, I, I think that it's telling us that we actually have the instructions and wisdom of Yah here, and those things are more to us than outsiders understand. So, like, more things have already been revealed to us than have been to them, even though they might have all this hidden, esoteric, occultic uh, ideas and knowledge and, and wisdom the kind of wisdom that Solomon kind of fell into in the end of his life. Right. It, it, he, he himself said that that wisdom was vanity. So I think that's kind of what it's saying here is like you already you already know more than they do and they don't even know that they don't realize it so kind of be content with with what he's given you you know it's interesting you said that too uh, first you talked about you know going down the dark 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 rabbit holes you know about you know dark incantations and whatnot mm-hmm. um, I was reading a book uh, a couple months ago now uh, I think it's the Testament of Solomon but mm. he was supremely interested in how 
demons worked. Like he wanted, right, to know, yeah. he wanted to know about them. So he ended up actually, uh, he was uh, given a ring, I guess, and it gave him uh, power over these demons. And he would come in and he, he'd bring them in. He'd interview them and whatnot. Anyways, he uh, ended up getting tricked by one of these demons, and uh, it ended up uh, it ended up being the beginning of the end for him. Um, and so that actually goes right into this, uh, like you said, be not curious in unnecessary matters. We don't need to know about demonology and and uh, all these dark wicked practices i think i think you're right i think knowing they exist is enough but um it's something i got convicted of personally about three years ago uh during this journey of truth and learning all this stuff is i started going down that path uh, of learning this stuff and something you know the whole, not something the, 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 the ruach was just like uh, uh uh you know you don't need to go down this dark dark hole uh it's mm-hmm. al- it was almost like you know watching a horror movie like you just don't need to do that like mm-hmm. it, you know the, the, that kind of stuff does not need to go through your eyes um and right. same thing that you know so anyways just uh yeah good point good point yeah uh, verse 24, <clears throat> for many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. And boy, oh boy, have we seen this, brother, especially with fellow brethren that have been, you know, together with us, and even in ministry, and, uh, you know, just like a maybe a disagreement in, in, in Scripture or interpretation, and all of a sudden, an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment, and all of a sudden, we're the enemy, we're leading people astray. I mean, it's just crazy stuff, and that's just, just a small example of what this verse could really, uh, what really could uh, bring out in our world, but just something that I think that we've uh, experienced just in our short little walk here, but... Um, Amen. Yeah, evil suspicion is big time out there Mm -hmm. i mean you just you just got done dealing with this yeah yeah oh yeah that's right i got my latest uh, expose um (laughs) uh, (laughs) someone had taken uh, a screenshot of uh i'll do it because this is not this supposedly was a as a um (laughs) an occultist hand sign so i mean it's just like crazy like already and this it's is like, someone. This is someone that follows supposedly follows Torah, uh, calls really? up, calls upon the true names, believes in a biblical flat Earth, and it's just like, man, uh, it's unfortunate that you know uh, many are, v- are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment, and they have now condemned the innocent. And uh, goodness, my uh, my prayers go out to this individual. So. Uh, just real quick. I mean, he, I know whoever this is probably is not going to watch this because they're not interested in what you're, what you're teaching anymore. Uh, cause you did something with your hand on accident or whatever, but all you ever have to do to, to figure out if something uh, evil suspicion makes sense or doesn't make sense is look at the fruit. It's that simple. I mean, so you're telling me that Satan used Adam to lead all these people to the true name, to the true Torah, to the true Messiah, the true Messiah's name, pointing out who the Antichrist is, pointing out who Israel is, teaching us to keep the commandments. He's done all this through Adam, a demon, a demon has, just <laughs> so he could throw up a little hand sign real quick and yeah. and, and do what? And accomplish what with right. that hand sign? Like, it's crazy. It is. I know. It is. Your judgment has been overthrown. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. It uh, it was a little disheartening, but uh, you know, and I, I ended up sharing it because I wanted my accuser to be heard. You know, because if they had something that I didn't need to repent of, I just I wanted to know about it. But uh, I think plenty of you chimed in, and uh, and you as well. So thank you for that. I, I appreciate yeah. it. Okay, so without eyes you shall want light. Profess not the knowledge, therefore, that you have not and that actually kind of ties into the the very same thing so this person was you know professing knowledge that they obviously did not have but you know obviously this there's a much broader uh sense of this and, and unfortunately we see a lot of people that want to be teachers that may not be ready to be teachers and they end up uh, un- unfortunately fulfilling this that they end up professing knowledge that they don't have um and kind of heaping sin on sin uh, mm-hmm. in that regard Interestingly, I, I think a lot of um, a lot of Christians have met pastors and teachers who who are never wrong and always have an answer for everything, supposedly, and uh, they they are teaching on things they don't even really know about. But it's pretty interesting, though, how when you start walking in Torah and studying Torah, and you bring that to them, suddenly they're speechless. Well, yeah. ex- except for a few, you know, catchphrase verses from the New Testament, they're speechless. Like. They stumble at at the word, but right. exactly. And you know, of- this is something that uh, 
you know, I even learned in the secular world, uh, you know, I was in sales for many years. And one thing that you just learned in sales was when you don't have the answer, you don't make up something. You just say, hey, you know, what? I don't know the answer to that question. That's a great question. I'll get right back to you. I'll go. I'll go find out and I'll get right back to you. I mean, and that's just in the secular world, but even how much more so in a scriptural sense when we're dealing with the word of Yahweh, when we don't know the answer to something, why on earth would we make something up and be like, you know, blah, 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 or whatever. Just say, hey, you know what? Just be honest and be humble and, and meek and say, you know what? I don't know the answer to that. That's a really good question, especially like if we're talking to somebody and trying to show the light and fruit of Torah, and they're like on the op opposing end, and they're like, well, what about, you know, da, 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 da. and instead of just, you know, vomiting at the mouth, just say, hey, you know, that's a really good question. You know, let me, I'll, let me, let me, let me uh, mark this down, and I'll, I'll send you an email, or I'll call you, or I'll, I'll talk to you next week about this, and right. whatever. I think people really, really appreciate that. Like I said, in the secular world, I saw people's eyes light up when they say, oh, wow, you're not just like every other salesperson, and just telling me what you want, you know, what we want to hear to make it satisfied. You're actually really going to seek this out for us and get us the right answer so people in the secular world appreciate it how much more are they going to appreciate it in a scriptural sense you know yeah. Build, really building trust by showing them you're not making stuff up you know right right exactly verse 26 a stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last and he that loves danger shall perish therein and goodness we see this in our i know this is just a modern interpretation of this but you know like sky mm -hmm. skydivers and thrill seekers and mountain climbers and we see it every day you know people <laughs> people that yeah. love danger shall perish and i know there's a lot more death to that but that was just the yeah. first thing that came to mind uh, i got the, a couple of verses i think that tie in pretty nice and one of them is actually from matthew 26. hang on let me pull let me pull up uh, this really quick Okay. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 26, 52. This is a short one. And I have two others from Proverbs here. Um, then Yahushua said unto him, put up again thy sword into his place for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So I think that goes along with he that loves danger shall perish therein. That means they're going to perish in the danger. And then Proverbs 28, 10. Yeah. 28, 10. What are the other ones? I'll just put them all up right now real quick. Uh, Proverbs 26, 27. Okay. There we go. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. And then, of course, uh, 26, 27. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that uh, he that loves danger shall perish therein is mm -hmm. like you start taking risks. Um, you're you're gonna fall by that risk, you know. Yeah. Uh, especially if that if you're taking risks risks to actually affect um, uh, evil on somebody else, right? Specifically, yeah. Yeah. Good one. Um, and so, just uh, backing up on this first half, a stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last. It reminds me of what's what's written in Deuteronomy 29, uh, 18 through twenty. Um, Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe who, whose heart turneth away this day from Yahuwah our Elohim to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart and add drunkenness to thirst. And in other versions it says, uh, in the stubbornness of my heart, that's why I remembered this verse, uh, to add drunkenness the thirst yahuwah will not spare him but then the anger of yahuwah and his jealousy shall smoke against that man and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him and yahuwah shall blot out all uh, shall blot out his name under heaven so just another warning for someone that would want to walk in the stubbornness of his heart right amen Okay, verse 27, an obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows and the wicked man shall heap sin upon sin in the punishment of the proud, there is no remedy, for the plant of wickedness has taken root in him. And this is obviously the opposite of the plant of righteousness that we've read so much about in Esdras, Baruch, um, I mean, even, yeah. even in the Torah. But this plant of, of wickedness is obviously the opposite of the plant of righteousness, um, you know, and, and we know that uh, it's, a, it's so many have 
the error of pride that when they're confronted with the truth, they, instead of humbling themselves, seeking it out, they dig in their heels, they get proud, and uh, they just cannot be taught. And actually, it's interesting that this comes up. This reminds me of yesterday. I went to uh, lunch with a few brothers, and we were, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a restaurant just eating some lunch. And um, we were... Uh, we have, uh, I have a brother, uh, his name is Adam also, who is, uh, he's a pretty loud guy. He just audibly, his gain is like 30% higher than everybody else. Right. <laughs> so he's just talking really loud, you know? And, and so we're talking about the tour and we had a brother with us that is, um, uh, uh, actually you may remember him. We baptized him almost two years ago in Branson. His name was Jacob. He and his brother came down and uh, anyways, uh, he kind of fell away, but he's coming back and he started seeing what we were talking about. I was kind of interested in what we're talking about. So yesterday we were talking about, um, you know, breaking away from the traditions of men and coming back to the truth. And, you know, we brought it all up. We brought up Torah. We brought up pork. We brought up the Sabbath and whatnot. And these people behind us kept giving Adam the wicked eye. And as they got up and left, they were just mad. The lady was throwing up her hands like, I can't believe we're talking about this stuff. And they like, I mean, they just gave us these skating looks like, how dare you, you know, uh, talk about these kind of things. I just couldn't believe it. Um, and so it's kind of a little off topic, but it just, it this verse just reminded me of what happened yesterday that when these when they were confronted with these things when they were hearing the truth instead of saying hey you know what you know because this has also happened to us at lunch before because Adam, again adam is very loud people are like hey you know um i got a question about what you're talking about it kind of doesn't make sense because you know we're saved by my grace and you know and, and, and whatnot so at least that person would be like hey you know i have some questions here uh that what you're saying doesn't really make sense uh, whereas, you know, the proud person would just, you know, just get upset and mad. And um, mm -hmm. so it's just something to think about. It's an yeah. thing that happened yesterday. Amen. Uh, all right. Verse 29. The heart of the prudent will understand a parable and an attentive ear is the desire of a wise man. And, you know, prudent, uh, I'm starting to see as far as prudence, we know prudence is like diligence. It's like seeking something out with with carefulness, you know, with a uh, with a, a zeal, with vigor, uh, like a Berean would. We know that, you know, Bereans studied the scriptures better than anybody else. But those of us that are being prudent with st uh, studying the scriptures and being diligent about these things, he's giving us he's starting to give us giving us understandings uh, with parables, which. Uh, you know, it's really easy. Uh, the scriptures kind of interpret the scriptures like, uh, you know, in uh, in John three, uh, right after the John three sixteen, like everybody knows. But if you keep reading, uh, Yahusha talks about, uh, you know, men love darkness rather than the light. And it's like, you know, what is the light? And we know that Proverbs six twenty three. you said it earlier, uh, Proverbs six twenty three says that the law, the Torah is light. So it's like, what was Yeshua actually saying? And if you don't know the scriptures, if you don't, if you're not a prudent person searching out the scriptures, you won't understand that parable that Yahusha taught, which was clearly saying that men loved wickedness rather than the Torah because their deeds were evil. And men don't come to the light, the Torah, uh, because they don't want to be reproved by it. So it's just, it's so exactly. interesting that, um, you know, when you do give this prudence to the scriptures, he will give you understanding uh, of parables, which are all over the place. Amen. Amen. So here we go. Here's the other uh, contra maybe on the surface being controversial. Water will quench a flaming fire. And then here's like the simile, right? And alms makes an atonement for sins. And just like Justin was explaining earlier that, uh, you know, this is uh, this is this is the heart of Yahuwah, you know, to have uh, love for our, our parents, to honor them and also to have, you know, charity amongst ourselves. And I'm just going to pull up two two quick verses. Uh, or three verses, excuse me, First Peter 4, 8, uh, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. So there it is, uh, there it is. with, you know, with one of the main apostles that followed Yahusha. Uh, you know, we, we, there's no way we can say Peter didn't know what he was talking about here. He was, he dwelt with Yahusha. He slept with him. He sweated with him. Uh, you know, he, he knew exactly the heart of, of the Torah because Yahusha was the Torah made flesh. And so yeah. he says it himself, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. There's really nothing else to discuss there. There's our second witness. Here's a third witness. James 5, 19-20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth a sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So it's like what this is saying, 
you know, and, and again, we have to understand what the Scripture says. We know the Scripture says in Psalm 119, 142, that His righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and His Torah is the truth, not a truth, not one of many truths, but literally mm-hmm. the truth. And that's why uh, John 14, 6 is also true when Messiah says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No Amen. one comes to the Father but by Him, because He was the Torah. He is the Torah, excuse me, not was, is the Torah. So he, what he's saying here is if anybody errs from the Torah and one convert him to the Torah, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way, right, because we know Torah is the way, shall save a soul from death, and guess what? Shall hide in a multitude of sins. So here we see another example of our actions being able to make atonement for other things that we do, uh, regardless of being saved by the blood of Yahusha, that our, our continued actions continue to make atonements for our ways. So let that sink in for anybody, uh, you know, to have patience with somebody that errs from the way, the Torah, that uh, mm-hmm. if we convert him, that here's the promise, that he shall hide a multitude of sins, which, you know, here we are, same thing, and alms make atonement for sins, and so it just continued uh, proof that our actions do uh, do weigh in the balance uh, for our deeds. Absolutely. Definitely. And uh, last one, verse 31, and he that requites good turns is, I'm sorry, and he that requites good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter, and when he falls, he shall find a stay. So, awesome. Good way to end it. Amen. Yeah, I think uh, it, it, it's coming to life here um, and coming to light also. I, I think for those of us uh, who are already walking in Torah for a while, this is probably just 101 common sense stuff that everyone already knows. But f- unfortunately for many, they don't. Many have been confused uh, by the doctrines of men into thinking that Yah is someone that we cannot understand at all. And that the word is so complicated and so confusing that it can't be read and consumed and just took taken at face value. And in, in one sense, there is some really interesting and complicated, maybe, maybe not complicated, but, but hidden ideas through prophecy about what's coming, about, about in parables and things like that. But the reality is um, the greatest thing about Torah for me is that it showed me that our father is just like a father. <laughs> and um, when we do, when our father sees us doing good to others, I, and I'm a father. I have kids, you know, and maybe maybe for those of you who are fathers can understand this pretty easily. But you you have such great compassion on on your kids when you see them doing good to other your other kids. You're just like, oh, I love that kid. You know, mm-hmm. like the kid could have been so annoying and so aggravating earlier, and could have could have willfully disobeyed you earlier, and you might you might have had to spank him for it or whatever. But ten minutes later, he's over there helping his little sister with something, and you're just like, I love that kid. You know, I. I, I forget in a way you almost immediately forget what bad they just did a few minutes ago. And it's really just that simple. I mean, it's not like, Oh, can blood atone for sin or can blood not atone for sin? Can alms atone for sin? Can alms? It? It's like so confusing. Well, wait, this verse says it can't, this verse says it can. It's like, look, it's very, it's just, there's many different figures of speech being utilized to give some general ideas, but the general idea is the same. And that is, that he's a good father. He's paying attention. He watches what we do. He's going to recompense everybody according to their works. Uh, and without, uh, and then, then people get confused. Well, what about Messiah? I thought he came to, to change all that or whatever. No, he, he came to be our intercessor. The, the priesthood was fallen, falling. Jerusalem was going to fall in 70 AD. All this was going to happen in 70 AD. Y'all knew it. He sent his son. He's now the priest. He's now our intercessor. He's now our final our final blood atonement until we get into the the, the Zion, right. and in the meantime, um, Yah's truth is still truth. His righteousness is still righteousness, and when you really dig into it, you find that Messiah was just teaching Torah again because they forgot it. <laughs> Very true. Very true. But, yeah. Very true. And and uh, you know that's the uh, you know it coincides with First uh, John First John two one through six, uh, which is which one of my favorite sections of verses. It kind of tells the whole thing, but it basically just says, you know, uh, brothers, I write to you that you sin not. But if you do, you know, we uh, we have atonement through Messiah Yahusha Hamashiach, uh, and it just goes on to you know continue to talk about doing the commandments. But so he knows, like you said, that's a great point. I'm, I'm, we're also I'm also a father as well, and 
same thing. Uh, how many times have I, you know, been angered by my by my child messing up? But you know, it, you know, they apologize and they're forgiven, and we move on. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not to say that it's like a, a free license to just keep messing up because I know Dad will forgive right. me. That yes. should, that that can't that can't be our heart in the things. But uh, right. I I think you know just like we know if our child would be abusing that freedom. Abba would know that if we're also abusing that freedom and would quickly, ca- we just as we would quickly catch on, so would he. Um, right. But uh, yeah, you brought up a, a good point about, you know, uh, you know, speaking about a child and say, oh, they messed up, but then later, like, I love them. Uh, that's, there's like a verse in, uh, I think it's Jeremiah 30 or 31. It said, uh, it says something like, I, I heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, uh, or I, I've spoken, I've spoken evil against uh, Ephraim, uh, but he is my dear son, and and I and I still love him very much, and so mm-hmm. it, it's just uh, just shows that same fatherly heart um, that we see. So just a really good point. But anyways, man, this is a great chapter. Um, yeah, it's great awesome. chapter. Yeah, awesome. Sure. Very so, good. Very good. Thank, thanks for for joining me, brother and uh, brothers and sisters. I apologize; it's been a couple of weeks, but uh, like we said from the from the outset, we're going to take our time with this. I think what we decided is we're probably just going to take one chapter uh, per session. So um, it's going to take us what is it fifty? How many chapters? Fifty cha- fifty one chapters? Fifty two yeah, chapters? So probably about a year's worth of content once yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah, and so we might do it every week, and sometimes we might take a, a few week break in, in between. So just have some patience with us. Uh, this is something that we don't uh, want to stress over. We want to just uh, uh, do with patience and diligence and and whatnot so but uh regardless brother a blessing to have you back on and uh if you don't mind i'm going to uh uh say a quick little prayer and we'll uh, we'll close this one out uh, heavenly father yahuwah we just come before you in yahusha's name uh we just thank you for this opportunity to study your word and we just pray that uh as the psalms say that to open our eyes to your torah that we may behold wondrous things out of it uh just like in these scriptures and all of it abba just continue to open our eyes and ears that we may uh we may learn and grow thereby and be more conformed to the image of yahusha your son rather than that of the world to which we all grew up and so we just bless you and thank you for this opportunity and we just send a multitude of holidays Hallelujah to you. Uh, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brother, thanks again for joining. And uh, we may do this, uh, maybe we'll try next week or the following week, but looking forward to chapter four because I know I say this all the time, but because uh, I have like probably 500 favorite verses, but literally like one of my top five favorite verses oh, I know, yeah. is, is at the end of chapter four. So I'm sure we'll have yep. a lot to talk about. I know exactly which one you're talking about, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you think this is good. Wait do you see next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll give you a little dangler for next week, right? <laughs> so anyways, all right, brothers and sisters, hey, shalom, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Shalom, guys.